Dear students, let us discuss about the internal thoracic artery. The peculiarity of this artery is it originates in the lower part of the neck, traverses through the intercostal spaces and it divides in the sixth intercostal space into its terminal branches which extend into the abdominal wall. The internal thoracic artery is also known as internal mammary artery as it supplies the anterior thoracic wall, anterior abdominal wall and mammary glands. And it's a paired artery. It runs on each side of sternum and continues after bifurcation as superior epigastric and musculophrenic arteries into the anterior abdominal wall. In this picture, you can see the internal thoracic artery originating from the first part of the subclavian artery and passing behind the first costal cartilage and through the intercostal spaces and dividing into the two terminal branches, the lateral musculophrenic artery and the medial superior epigastric artery. Coming to the origin of the internal thoracic artery, it takes origin from the first part of subclavian artery in the lower part of the neck that is root of the neck and descends medially behind the sternal end of the clavicle and first costal cartilage. Then it descends vertically behind the second to sixth costal cartilages laying about one centimeter from the margin of the sternum and at the level of a sixth intercostal space it terminates by dividing into musculophrenic and superior epigastric arteries. In this picture, you can see the artery coming from the first part of subclavian artery and passing behind the first costal cartilage and clavicle and then behind the second to sixth costal cartilages and terminating in the sixth intercostal space and its two divisions, the lateral musculophrenic artery and the medial superior epigastric artery. Coming to the relations of internal thoracic artery, in front it is related to the upper six intercostal spaces and their muscles. It is crossed by the terminations of upper six intercostal nerves which you can see in this picture. So, it's crossed by the terminations of the upper six intercostal nerves. And posteriorly, it is related to the pleura up to the third costal cartilage. And below the third costal cartilage, the transverse thoracic muscle intervenes between it and the pleura. On each side of it lies the vertical chain of parasternal lymph nodes and the venae comitans. So the two veins that are accompanying the artery, and they extend up to the level of third costal cartilage where the venae comitans, they unite to form single internal vein which ascends upwards on the medial side of the artery, you can see it, that, and opens into the brachiocephalic vein of the corresponding side. These are the relations of the internal thoracic artery. Coming to the branches of the internal thoracic artery, 
a pair of anterior intercostal arteries in each of the upper six intercostal spaces are given by the internal thoracic artery. So in this picture you can see the pair of anterior intercostal arteries in each of the upper six intercostal spaces and the two terminal branches of the internal thoracic artery you are seeing they are the musculophrenic artery which is the lateral terminal branch it passes under the costal margin to enter the anterior abdominal wall by passing through the aperture in the diaphragm. The anterior intercostal arteries of 7th to 9th spaces are originating from the musculophrenic artery. The superior epigastric artery is the medial terminal branch and it passes between the xiphoid and adjacent costal origin of diaphragm and enters the anterior abdominal wall and in particular it enters the rectus sheath where it anastomoses with the inferior epigastric artery. So in this picture what you have seen is the terminal branches you are seeing and the anterior intercostal arteries that are given by it and in addition you are seeing the pericardiophrenic artery which runs along with the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm. The other branches of the internal thoracic artery or the pericardiophrenic branch that runs along with the phrenic nerve along with the phrenic nerve to reach the diaphragm and it supplies the pleura and pericardium. Then there are the perforating branches that are given in the upper six intercostal spaces and those in the second to fourth space they supply the mammary gland in females. The other branches are the medial stainal branches so which will be supplying the thymus, the lymph nodes, the pericardium etc. and the other is the sternal branches. In this picture you can see the dissection of the thorax showing the internal thoracic artery and the posterior aspect of the anterior chest wall. You can see the internal thoracic artery with its accompanying venae comitants and you are also seeing the pair of anterior intercostal arteries that are originating from the internal thoracic artery in a intercostal space. And you can see the posterior relations of it that is the transversus thoracis muscle we are seeing. In this picture you can see the posterior view of anterior chest wall showing the internal thoracic artery and then its relation with the transversus thoracis muscle can be appreciated and the two veins accompanying it are also seen and the anterior intercostal arteries that are given by it in the upper six spaces also can be seen in this picture. Coming to the clinical importance of internal thoracic artery, the artery is peculiar in that it supplies the thorax, diaphragm and anterior abdominal wall and it is preferred in coronary artery bypass graft surgery which is known as CABG surgery wherein the artery 
is anastomosed with the branches of the coronary artery in this picture you can see the left anterior descending branch of the left coronary artery is anastomosed to the left internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery so why the internal thoracic artery is preferred in coronary artery bypass graft is that the chances of developing atherosclerosis or less for the internal thoracic or internal mammary artery because it contains elastic fibers in its wall and atheroma protective secretions are provided by the endothelial cells of the internal thoracic artery so in this discussion we have discussed the origin course termination relations branches and clinical importance of internal thoracic or internal mammary artery